Hello, my name is Stuart Hamblin. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Given the current situation with the coronavirus outbreak, I thought it would be a good opportunity to share with you one of my absolute favourite Feldenkrais lessons, which you can easily do at home. It's part of a, a series of lessons which I taught here in Rutland called Happy Hips, Happy Knees and Happy Feet. And um, the lesson is based upon a lesson that was originally taught to me by one of my teachers, Jeremy Krauss, and I'll put more details about his work in case you're interested in the comments section below. So please begin the lesson by lying down on your back. And take a moment just to notice the contact that you make into the floor. How comfortable are you to rest down on the floor with the legs long? And then just roll the head a little bit from one side to the other. Um, just giving yourself permission to do what's um, to stay within a very easy range. So I'm not trying to stretch any muscles, but I'm just kind of asking how easy is the head turning to the right compared to the left. As you roll your head, are you able to keep the jaw free of tension, the breath nice and easy? And then come to centre and then please bring your two legs to standing. And then um, bring your attention to your right knee and begin to move the knee a little bit to the outside and to the inside. So it's, I, I, it's not a big movement, um, deliberately not a big movement. I'm just moving the knee a little bit to the outside and to the inside. Um, just feeling how the contact, the weight shifts on the feet uh, in accordance with the movement of the knee. So, when I take the knee to the outside, I can feel the weight coming clearly on the little toe side of that foot. And then when I bring the knee to the inside, I feel it coming, the weight coming down more into the big toe side of the foot. So I'm just noticing that. And then um, pause. And then um, think of lifting the big toe side of the foot and then the little toe side of the foot. So I'm lifting the big toe side of the foot and then the little toe side of the foot and just noticing how that is. So I'm not sort of lifting the toes to do this. I'm just thinking, can I, can I discover a way of lifting the big toe side of the foot to bring the weight onto the little toe side and then lifting the little toe side to bring on to the big toe side. Um, and what you may find happening is you need to do a big movement initially of the knee to help you do that. But see after a while, you can keep the knee fairly quiet. So the knee not moving so much, but I'm, I'm just thinking, can I discover this movement more in my ankle. Ankle. That's good. And then um, pause and then see now if you can lift the big toe of the right foot and curl the little four little toes under. And then see if you can curl the big toe under and extend the four smaller toes. So I'm thinking of curling under the four smaller toes and lifting the big toe, and then curling the big toe under and lifting the four smaller toes. Now, if you're doing this at home, um, if it's anything like the experience of my students in Rutland, um, you may think I'm crazy. Um, you may just find your toes aren't moving at all, or they're moving together as a piece. You may find suddenly your jaw wanting to get involved. So don't worry, just do what you can to try and curl the four smaller toes under as you extend the big toe. So that's what I, in terms of the hand, that's what you'd be doing. 
and then you curl the, the big toe under to extend the four smaller toes. And again, if you need to make a movement with the knee to do that, then that's absolutely fine. But just see what you can do to differentiate the four smaller toes curling under from the big toe, and then the big toe curling under from the four smaller toes. Good. And then once you've done that, let the legs go long. Just notice, do you feel maybe, even after such a small amount of movement, a clarity in the hip joint? And then with the leg long, try to curl the big toe, the four smaller toes under as you extend the big toe, and then curl the big toe under as you try and extend the four smaller toes. And you'll see, I find it difficult too, um, but I'm not going to give up. I'm going to try and curl the big toe under as I ex try to extend the four smaller toes and then curl the four smaller toes under as I extend the big toe. And you'll perhaps see, even though I'm not doing it perfectly, it's actually bringing movement throughout the leg into the hip joint. Good, and then pause, bring the legs back to standing and then try again to curl the four smaller toes under of the right foot as you extend the big toe and then curl the big toe under as you extend the four smaller toes. So just think, is that any easier? And then pause, leave it alone, take a rest and then bring the legs back to standing and now try with the left leg to first of all just move the knee a little bit to the outside and to the inside to see what that's like to shift the pressure underneath the foot to the big toe side and then the little toe side and then pause and then see if you can lift the big toe side of the foot and then the little toe side of the foot, just rocking the weight from side to side, but tr trying to keep the knee fairly quiet. And then pause, and then see, can you curl the big toe under and extend the four smaller toes? And then try and curl the four smaller toes under as you extend the big toe. So again, my left foot behaves in a very different way to my right foot. Um, so I'm trying to curl the big toe under, so I extend the four smaller toes, and then curl the small smaller toes under as I extend the big toes. Good. And you may find there's a difference between the two, two feet. Then extend the legs. And then um, try with both feet to extend the big toes as you curl the four smaller toes, as, as you uh, extend the four smaller toes, and then try to extend the big toes as you curl the four smaller toes under. Don't be surprised if you are doing this at home, you get some cramp going on. It's it's trying to wake up some neural pathways that may not have been used for many, many years. We spend most of our adult lives imprisoning our feet in shoes and walking on flat surfaces. So just see what you can do to wake up this, this movement in the, in the feet. Good. Now, pause and the next part of this lesson, just for a short amount of time, we're going to be lying on the front, which isn't so easy necessarily for you to follow me, but if you are able to do so, um, come to lie on the front. If not, then just skip ahead um, to a later part of the, of the lesson. We're not going to be here for very long, but see if you can come to lie, lie on your front and um, you can have the hands wherever is comfortable for you, have the head turned whichever way is comfortable for you, um, and um, then have the feet a comfortable distance apart. And then with your right foot, begin to try and 
stand the four toes, the five toes even, and then point the foot. So you're just trying to see, can you stand the foot as if you're in a starting block, and then point the foot. So you stand the foot, and point the foot, and stand the foot. Ooh, I've got an itch. <laughs> So you point and flex the foot a few times and then stay with the toes um, standing. So you're really trying to stand the toes and then just move the heel a little bit to the outside to bring the weight to the four smaller toes and then to the inside to bring the weight towards the big toe side. So just going from side to side Noticing, are you able to go over to the final toe and then to the big toe? So just trying to bring weight to the outside and to the inside. And then stay on the big toe side. So you've brought the heel to the big toe side. And then use the floor to fix the toe as you try and curl and extend the four smaller toes. Just seeing if you can do that. And then pause to take a rest. And then stand the foot again, stand the toes rather, bring the weight to the four smaller toes and see if you can fix them in place as you just try and extend and flex the big toe. Very challenging to do. Good. And then pause, leave it alone. And then once more just roll the heel to the outside and the inside, this time with the foot pointed. And then once more stand the toes, see if you can take the heel to the outside and to the inside. And you may be able to see here, I'm not trying to hold my pelvis in place, I'm just letting the movement travel through me. Good. And then pause. Now, if you want to have a quick rest on the back, then please do so. But otherwise, I'm going to do the other foot straight away. So, with your left foot, point and flex the foot a few times. So, I try to stand the toes, I point the foot, stand the toes, and point the foot stand the toes and point the foot and then stay with the toes standing and as much as possible see if you can move the heel to the little toe side and then to the big toe side keeping the toes curled under that's it to the big toe side and the little toe side and then stay trying to fix the four smaller toes as you then try and flex and extend the big toe on its own. So you're using the floor to fix the four fingers, the four toes rather, as you move, move the big toe. And then um, move the heel to the outside and to the inside a few times. And then stay over on the big toe side and see can you fix the big toe as you try and curl and extend the four smaller toes. I can feel something happening in the hip as I do that. Good. Leave it alone. And then just point and flex the feet a few times. And then come to lie on your back. This lesson I love it's I love it so much because it's weird <laughs> and wacky but you'll see as the lesson goes on just how marvellous it is. So come to lie on the back have the legs long and then just see if the curling the big toes under as you extend the four smaller toes and curling the four smaller toes under as you extend the big toes is any easier as a result of those variations on the back. Good. 
Now, pause. Bring the legs to standing. And then come to lie on your... Um, so for me, it's my left-hand side. But come to lie on the side. And um, maybe have some pillows just to support the head. Um, if you're not, not comfortable without any, any support. And then have your knees bent up initially. And then have your um, bottom arm stretched out in front of you at shoulder height. And then have the, um, for me it's my right arm, just resting on my side. Now, um, begin to take your right shoulder, your top shoulder, back in space. So I'm just thinking of taking the shoulder back. Now, um, as you do this, notice, do you, what I often see in class is people keep the shoulder very held and think they're moving it back, but what in fact they're doing is moving the elbow back and the shoulder forward and then doing this kind of thing. So see if you can keep the arm quiet and just think it's the shoulder, shoulder is going back and down towards the floor behind you. And allow, as you take the shoulder back, begin to turn the head and eyes to. So as the shoulder goes back, I allow the head and eyes to turn. Good. And just notice as you're turning the head, are you able to keep length in the back of the neck? See, if the support is too long, low, what would probably happen is I'd be shortening in the back of the neck. So see if you're just able to keep length in the back of the neck as you take the shoulder back. And you can see, although the instruction is given in terms of the shoulder, it's actually the chest can turn. You see how my top knee is sliding back a little bit to help, help me turn. So you get this sort of nice twist going on in the spine. And then pause. And then the next time you take the shoulder back, don't turn the head. Stay looking at your extended arm. And as you take the shoulder back, slide the head back in space. See, my head has travelled back, and then I come back. So, as the shoulder goes back, I try to stay looking with my nose and eyes at my extended arm, and then come back. So, I shift weight off my underneath shoulder. Good. And then pause. And then the next time you take the shoulder back, combine the movement of sliding the head and allowing it to turn to look towards the ceiling. So that I slide and turn the head as the shoulder goes back. The chest gets very open and then come back. So I slide and turn the head to take the shoulder back, good. And then um, pause, and then from here, just turn over onto the other side. So I'll turn this way, this way, so I'm not showing my back to the camera, just to show, show you that. So you have the bottom arm underneath you, top arm is just resting on your side, and I think of taking the Shoulder back, allowing the head to turn, and then I come back. Just want to point out something to you. So as the shoulder goes back and comes back, again, what I often see in class is the shoulder back, and then they try and contract the shoulder to pull them forward. Um, they pull from here, whereas actually you don't need to do any of that effort. See, I'm where I'm making contact into the floor, that's where I'm rolling. I'm rolling into the floor to come back. I'm not having to, I'm transferring weight as opposed to having to pull myself forward unnecessarily. 
So once you've done that a few times, keep the head looking forward at your underneath hand and simply slide the head back as you take the shoulder back and then come forward. So I slide the head back as I take the, sh the shoulder back. And then once you've done that a few times, you can combine sliding and turning the head. That's it, as you take the shoulder back and then you come back onto the side. So I slide and turn the head as I take the shoulder back. And then pause, leave it alone, take a rest if you need to. But then come back to lie on your other other side. Okay. So now in this position, have your um, so you're on your side again. The underneath arm is extended in front of you. Top arm is just resting on your side. Okay. See if you can begin. You can extend your top leg for, forward, and then lengthen your underneath leg away from you and then begin to do a movement of lengthening your top leg so for me it's my right leg away from you and then bring it back towards you so I'm keeping the leg long and I'm just thinking of pushing the leg away from me and then bringing it back towards me. So I go forward and then back. Good. So you lengthen the leg forward. So I, I feel the length through the leg. See how my heel is turning towards the ceiling. And then I come back. Good. Now I go forward. That's it. Now, once you've got used to this movement, see if you can just play with this feeling. So I kind of pull, push through the leg. And now I think of taking the shoulder back. I think of the leg lingering. The head turns to bring me back. So I push the leg forward. I let the shoulder linger to go forward and then come back. Now, just notice how you let the heel turn of the right leg turn towards the ceiling. Come back. Just notice how your the leg that is long, my left leg, as I take the top leg forward, that leg, that heel is also turning towards the ceiling. I'm not making it happen, but it is happening if I'm not interfering with it as the leg goes forward and back. See how both heels turn towards the ceiling. Good. And then see if you can begin to think of your forward leg, the leg that you're pushing forward, of curling the big toe under as you extend the four smaller toes and then curling the four smaller toes under as you extend the big toe. Just see, can you curl the big toe under as you extend the four smaller toes and curl the four smaller toes under as you extend the big toe. Quite challenging to do. Don't worry if it goes wrong, doesn't matter just playing with the movement. Big toe under as you extend the four smaller toes and then curl the four smaller toes under as you extend the big toe. And then now that you've gotten into that pattern, see if you can include the other foot in that party as well. So I'm thinking of extending the big toes as curling, curling the big toe under as I extend the four smaller toes under and then curling the four smaller toes under as I extend the big toe. Good. And you can begin to feel 
that um, although we're thinking in terms of the legs and the feet, this movement of going forward as if I wanted to go onto my front and onto my back, I'm actually creating that from my, my centre. Now pause, leave it alone, take a rest if you need to, and come and try that on the other, other side. So start off initially um, with the underneath arm stretched out in front of you, have the top leg long and the bottom leg long too and then begin to think of just reaching your top leg down and away from you and then back towards you. Keeping it long though, don't bend the leg. You try and reach down and away from you, letting the heel turn towards the ceiling and then you, you come back. Notice how both heels, in fact, if you're not interfering with the movement, are turning the heel towards the ceiling and then back. And so I now, I, I want to think of lengthening down through the leg and then I let the leg linger and I think of the shoulder, the head turning to bring myself towards my back again. Length push the tummy out. Can you see how I'm trying to find the floor with my middle as I reach the leg down and then I, I come back. And then you can see, can you begin to include the big toe four toe movement, trying to extend the big toes as you curl the four smaller toes under and vice, vice versa. Oh, so difficult to do everything at once, but see what you can do and breathe at the same time. So I'm reaching down and away, thinking of both legs being long, and then come back. Good. Okay, once you've done that a few times, leave it alone. Take a rest again if you need to and then come to lie on the other side. So set yourself up in the same way. So I extend the top leg in front and, and down a bit. Extend the other leg long. Have my arm on my side. And then just return. Don't worry so much about the toe movement now. But really think of lengthening your top leg down and away from you as the heel turns towards the ceiling. Think of the other leg being long too. And you can see that where this is going is, you see, as I keep reaching and lengthening the legs, what happens is all these muscles, it creates a pull through the spine and the back so that if I wanted to come onto my front, front, I could do, and then to go back, I can slowly transfer my weight towards the back. So you can see, I lengthen the leg down, I reach through the other leg, then my, I turn, I roll into the floor, and then without me really having to think about it, my head floats up and then to go back I let the head reach down round to come on to my to come on to my back. So again I think you reach down with the top leg down and away, the other hand comes to find the floor and if I wanted to come on to my front I could do and then I come back. So can you see, I'm not dropping the head, I'm, I'm letting it land safely because I'm controlling the position of the head 
through the reach, the reach of the of the legs. Okay. Now, if you wanted to take this further, of course, I'll just get the pillows out of the way. This is what see I can reach this hand can come up. If I wanted to, I could go all the way around to the other other side. So I I reach, 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 and then I can come on to the other side. Such a nice movement to do. So I'll just show you that on the other side. So, bottom arm stretched out in front. Um, I don't need a pillow now. Um, top leg, bottom leg stretched out, reaching down, and top arm just resting on my side. I reach down through the legs. And can you see I'm transferring weight? Weight, 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 weight into my front, and my head begins to lift automatically to enable me to look around the room and then to come back. Again, I'm not dropping the head, I'm letting, I'm looking at the floor like a baby would do to check it's still there, and then I can come back onto my back. So I reach reach with the leg, begin to roll towards my front. You see, I can, if I didn't want to, I can change my mind. I can come back, I can come forward. So, as Feldman Christ said, a good movement is a reversible movement. So, I can breathe, I can keep the jaw nice and relaxed. If I wanted to come onto my front all the way, I could do to explore the room or I can go back or I can begin to I really want to go on front I could come and then continue round round to the other side and go forward Once you've explored it on each side, and then come to lie on your back and just see how that all feels. Um, oh, my hips feel fantastic after that, and my feet feel a lot more alive, rolling the head nice and easy. Great. So, <coughs> excuse me. Great. So there you have it. Um, a quick introduction to one of my favourite lessons, Feldenkrais lessons. I hope you've enjoyed doing it at home. If you have done so, please leave a comment for me in the comment section below. If you like the video, please hit the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, then please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.